made you think this was a good idea? I, look, I just thought while I was in there... While you were in there? Surely a man of your stature knows better. I know, but I just thought... You thought wrong. You know, we could understand a single harness, but two... It just seemed to make sense. Oh, it makes sense all right. For an insane person. Are you insane, Mr. Fury? No, of course not. Then why don't you help us understand what's happening here? Look, I, I, I think I want a lawyer. I can assure you that where you're going, a lawyer will be of little use to you. What do you mean? Where you're going, Mr. Fury, is a place called Project Hell. Wait, what? Let me ask you a question. When you tore down your engine, did you look at the cam bearings? I don't see how... Answer the question. Did you look at the cam bearings? Yes. Were they bad? Yes. We're done here. Wait, no. So in this next phase of the project, we need to remove all of the wiring from this car. So as part of the engine install, I've already done that in the engine compartment in the front end of the car. Um, under the dash here is a whole different story. And you know, as we get into the back of the chassis, that's also a separate piece of the puzzle. Um, so as part of our, our wiring harness redo here, um, we've got to get under the dash, we've got to remove all this crusty old wiring, the original wiring, some of the modified wiring that I've done in the past that maybe other previous owners or an owner has done in the past, and get all of that out of there to, number one, get it out, but number two, um, clean out all the dust and the dirt, paint over any rust that's under there. I know there's a bunch of surface rust under the, the, the dashboard area, so that needs to be taken care of as well. Um, once we get the dash kind of gutted, um, we're gonna move to the rest of the car. I have some sill plates that go along the, kind of the, the sides where the door's shut, and there's a bunch of wiring in there, and then there's a chassis harness in the back. So this is largely gonna be a little bit of a demo project. I'll try to film as best I can, but it's challenging uh, in the low light conditions here in the car and then getting up under the dash. So we'll see how we do. Okay, so we've successfully stripped out the wiring harness and the entire dash. Um, uh, the temptation to come in here and get all this cleaned up and repainted is very high. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna figure out what to do about that. A um, couple things to note, obviously I didn't say it before I started this, but make sure your battery's disconnected, there's a lot a lot of electricity going on back here with the ignition and the cigarette lighter and basically all of this stuff. So don't want sparks flying, wrong kind of sparks. Um, what else? 
so I have the only wiring left back here is from my steering column, so I actually replaced this um, not too long ago, so that's pretty new and that'll mate up to the new harness. Um, I've got this piece left. This goes up through my A-pillar into the ceiling. That's the dome light. Um, I may leave that. Uh, you know, the wiring's a little crusty. I might just redo the connector on that and call that a day. But let's, uh, let's jump out of the car here and see what we've removed. Okay, so what we're looking at here, this is the complete harness. Um, it's interesting, as I move to uh, this universal speedway harness, which I'll kind of go over in a minute, um, the original fuse box for this car only had six fuses total in the entire fuse box in the entire car, which is just amazing to me. Um, a few other things, when I was pulling out all this wiring, I noticed uh, this connector is kind of a good example. Um, this was on the HVAC, connected to my controls, completely melted. Um, connectors are all just fried, and you can kind of see evidence of, of that in a couple of the other connectors. So, if you're ever thinking about rewiring your car, this is why you do it. Um, the fact that there's only six fuses on this entire car and zero relays from the factory. Um, you know, not that there were necessarily relays back then, but just the fact that, um, you know, when I was pulling apart the, the dash panel, the gauge panel, um, you know, I had a large amount. I had some really heavy gauge red wires going through that. The original wiring for the car sent all of the, um, the charging energy from the alternator through the ammeter. So that was actually a failure point in, in these cars that, um, you know, you can bypass if you're sticking with the old wiring. But um, now that I have this out, I'm definitely glad to be moving away from this because this is, you know, with the amount of, uh, amount of current I'm going to be running through wires for things like the fuel pump and, um, you know, upgrading headlights and just stuff like that with this new engine. Um, definitely glad that this is out of here. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. I don't think I need to document this too much. It's pretty standard. I may need to reuse some of these connectors. So this one specifically, it's kind of like this barrel connector. Um, this goes into the back of the gauge cluster. Rather than um, trying to recreate that or doing something weird, I might just reuse this because this, this is just a plastic piece and it looks like there's some uh, like barrel type connectors in there, which I'll, I might have to may have to source, but we'll we'll figure that out. Um, the rest of it is actually pretty straightforward once you kind of get it out of there. Um, so let's take a look at the new Speedway cluster. Okay, so this is the Speedway Motors 22 circuit wiring kit. So right off the bat, you can see um, just how robust and flexible this kit is. Um, so the interesting thing here is that we have, you know, 22 circuits, which means, you know, 22 individual fuses that we'll be um, taking into account here. So this is the fuse box. We're going to find a place for this under the dash, which should be interesting, fine, because it's way bigger than the stock one, but we'll figure that out. Might have to make another bracket because I love making brackets. A um, few things to note here. Um, all the wires, so just kind of like quick review on it, all the wires are labeled um, from beginning to end, kind of like every four inches they're, they're labeled what they're for, um, which is super helpful, especially when uh, you know, you're dealing with a car this old and you're pulling old wires and even the colors are kind of unreliable. Um, comes with ample connectors for battery, for charging, plenty of grounds, and the instructions are pretty good. Um, it's not necessarily step by step, but they give you enough diagrams that you can kind of piece it together. So one of the actual, one of the things that I was really curious about or that was kind of fuzzy to me when I bought this kit and when I was thinking about the Terminator X or how to integrate it into the stock harness, it's really all the same, is how these two things marry. Um, you know, basically how the Speedway harness connects to the LS harness. And really there's only a few different, there's kind of a handful of, of interface points and then the rest is really just two independent systems. So you've got a chassis harness, you supply your power and ground to um, essentially like the LS harness, and then that's, that's kind of its own standalone thing. Now, where it gets a little complicated is that this kit um, actually comes with a somewhere, can't find it right now, it comes with a relay hardwired in, 
And then the LS kit actually comes with a few relays hard wired in. So I'm not gonna be using those. I want a, a dedicated relay box in the engine bay. That's where I can find it. Um, I don't wanna be like mounting random relays and fuses in different places. So we're gonna centralize all that. So there will be some modification of both this kit and the Terminator X harness. So um, next thing we need to do is get back under the dash, get that kind of vacuumed out um, and probably hit it with some rust reformer paint and then just clean it up in general to get ready for um, kind of running all this chassis harness. So a few other things that I wanted to point out while we're here at the workbench. Um, first is I have this, this kit I got off eBay. So this is an Astro weather pack seal connector kit. So this is really just like a, a Chinese knockoff of the Delphi weather connect connector. So in the event that I don't use some of the connectors that came with the kit, or I need to replace some of the stock connectors, I wanted to go with something that was like OEM spec. So these are all weather sealed and they come with the little terminal ends. They come with the seals. So, you know, you can, they can be inside the car, outside the car, wherever, and they'll keep water and basically any dirt or dust out of the connections. So that's this piece and then I guess the only other piece is really the Terminator X harness which I haven't really taken a long pass through so we'll cover that in an upcoming segment. Now this is our Holly Terminator X Max harness. Um, so again this is the Max and this is the kit with the drive-by wire and also transmission control so this is kind of the the full package. Um, a couple things here, like I mentioned when talking about the Speedway harness, um, Holly builds it with these relays actually wired in, kind of hardwired into the harness itself, and I suppose you're just supposed to mount this randomly somewhere, wherever they tell you it makes sense for your car, um, but that's obviously not how we're going to do it. Um, so this is this is nice because it's already it's kind of pre-config for you know where the the relays and like this for example, this is a fuse holder, so this little. Uh, blade fuse in here. So this these two things coming off of the main harness are actually just going to get rewired into my relay box, which I will actually go over in the next episode because I have that on order. A um, few other things to note, this is kind of a universal fit. So they assume you're going to put your ECU under the dash. Um, they have everything labeled. So again, we're, we're kind of starting in a really good place here with this and the other harness and that everything's pre-labeled. And um, if you watch the, uh, the Skid Factory at all on, on their channel, um, Al always says that wiring is pretty straightforward. Every wire just has to go somewhere. Um, so that's kind of the basic premise behind this whole project. Um, I am going to have to modify this harness. There's just no way around it. Um, there's just a few things that are out of place, um, specifically like the way I have my coil set up um, and also the alternator. This doesn't come with alternator wiring pre-wired so you kind of have to do that yourself. Um, there are a couple kits so you can get one from Sloppy. You can find a couple kits on eBay and Amazon um, that use the auxiliary power which is uh, not these two but I think it's this. Um, no that's the injectors. Um, there are some there's there's an auxiliary plug in here which will give you a 12 volt source if you want to use that for your alternator. I'm going to do something different with my alternator um, and basically run a direct wire to the battery from the alternator so I'll bypass this whole harness and I'll handle my charging system separately with a combination of the chassis harness kit and then some of my own wiring just because I have a very specific way I want to do it. I want to keep certain things separated and that's just the easiest way. Not to mention, I already have the battery in the back of the car, um, so in the trunk of this this vehicle. So I need to do a few little things differently, and I've got a giant uh, battery cable running up front already. So anyway, rambling at this point. Um, cool thing about the Terminator X is it comes with kind of a step-by-step -step, um, install manual, which is very helpful, especially when tackling something of uh, you know at this level of complexity. Um, I will say the the packaging. Um, I, I was I actually compared that to my um, Circle D torque converter, which came in like this really nice like Apple kind of box, and everything was packaged really nice. This was kind of just thrown in a box together. Um, from what I understand from the internet, uh, there's this guy Truck Dog. He, he frequents the forums. He has his own channel. Um, he said that they actually outsourced this to uh, a company in Canada to build these. That's um, 
I guess seeing impaired people build these harnesses. So you could say this is built by blind people, um, which is actually pretty awesome that they do that. Um, I'm not sure how that works in practice, but uh, super cool that Holly does that. I imagine they get a price break. Um, but that said, we are going to be making some changes to make sure that this works for our chassis. So Holly, harness, Speedway harness coming together in a new car, not a new car, but like a new chassis, probably for both of these kits. I don't know if either of these kits has ever been installed in a, a mid 60s Mopar B body station wagon with a turbo setup. So anyway, um, that's that's this. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the wiring diagram at some point. As best we're able to discern, what Mr. Fury is actually doing is attempting to marry two wiring harnesses. Central piece being ECU, provided by Holly, the Terminator X, very popular. The challenge is that this is a very old car, very old wiring accompanying the very old car. So what we need to do is determine how exactly he plans to do this. This is a very large scale project, fraught with peril. It's best we're able to tell based on our preliminary investigation is that he's obtained a wiring harness for the Terminator X system, as well as a universal harness for any type of muscle car. The distinction's important because if it were built for the chassis that he has, it would be a much simpler project. The situation is further complicated by a unique fuse box and electrical wiring system in the engine bay, and compounded by the fact that he's running a battery in the trunk of the vehicle. This is incredibly important because there needs to be power distributed to the rear of the vehicle near the battery, accompanying the fuel pump, as well as the front of the vehicle. We're going to continue to investigate as this unfolds. Okay, so we are here in the back of the car, so this would normally be covered by, um, by kind of a big piece of wood with like a flooring on it or something like that. But I have that off so I can get to all of this stuff. Um, it's still off from the work I did back here before. So back here I had the radio um, in my initial setup. I've got an amp here, I have a sub up there. I have a battery. The battery will be going back here in this spare tire well, along with some other stuff that we'll do for this fuel pump. But that's at a later point. Um, what we need to do now is just kind of clear out some of this old wiring. I've got a bunch of speaker wire that I probably need to reroute because I can't have that near um, any of my electrical wires. So I probably need to take one side of the car, which will likely be the passenger side, dedicate that to speaker wire, and then the driver's side will be all of my power and um, I guess signal wires and the rest of my harness. So we're just gonna clear some of this out. We've gotta take some of these panels off over here out of frame and um, get the rest of the stock harness removed.
All right, so quick update. Um, where we are is I got the dash kind of rust proof. So I use this stuff called Duplicolor Rust Fix. Um, you can buy this from a bunch of different brands. I've used the Rust-Oleum version in the past, um, which basically turns the rust, it kind of converts it into like a, a oxide, a type of oxide that's not rust, so it won't continue. Um, so basically one, just go in there and hit the back of the dash, the underside um, of everything in there that's been rusting, surface rusting for years. And then I'm gonna hit it with some primer and some paint um, just to keep it, kind of give myself a nice surface to work on. Um, when I install the new harness. Speaking of the harness, the other part that you saw me doing was, you can kind of see here in my mess of cords, um, I got the full wiring harness pulled out of the car. And what that means is, um, I already talked about the part that came from under the dash. So I pulled this long piece kind of right here, traces all the way back, it's about 18 feet long because this car is really long. And this goes back to my driver's side tail light on the back of the car. Now, what happens here is then it's kind of branched off and it comes down here and kind of goes under the car into this harness, which feeds into my tailgate. So interesting thing here is that the tailgate has these uh, tail lamps right here. Terrible angle, but um, I've got some tail lamps in the tailgate itself in addition to the ones that are on the body of the car. And also in here I have the motor, which controls the window to go up and down. So the interesting thing, as I mentioned before when we were looking at the fuse box, is that these old cars don't have relays, right? So you have these really thick, heavy gauge wires going back to this motor, because this motor draws a lot of amps to get this big, heavy piece of glass up and down over and over and over. So what I need to do here is I have some rust repair to do on this tailgate. So I will probably save this harness in the tailgate for when I do that. So I'm basically gonna bring it back here. We're gonna terminate. We're gonna do both of these outside tail lamps over here and over there. And then we'll leave this as is. So basically I'm gonna leave the wiring intact. We'll make sure that it gets electricity. But what I wanna do here is actually convert the tailgate motor to run off of a relay. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of research to see what I need to do there and I will get into that when we come back here. But basically have the entire car apart. Um, I've got my interior panels all over the place. Garage is just a complete disaster. However, I am feeling pretty good. Um, I think after uninstalling all this wiring and seeing how simple the original harness was, um, I kind of have a good idea of now of what I need to do. So overall feeling pretty good about the project. So paint's gonna dry. And when we come back in the next episode, we're gonna get into actually installing some of this chassis harness, this is the Speedway harness, and I will get into way more detail on what I'm doing there. I'm gonna get a bunch of stuff ordered this week, so we'll have a bunch of new parts in, and we will start to set that up. So, that's coming up in the next episode. Overall, feeling good, making progress. I will see you guys in the next one. Not out yet, Fury.